Let's take a brief look at what an elastic and inelastic collision is. Um, two cards are coming towards each other and they're going to collide. And we're frequently interested in the kinetic energy because that helps us figure out how fast the objects are going before or after the collision. So these two cards are going to collide and I look at how much kinetic energy they have. 60 and 40, which adds up to 100. Keep in mind that energy is not a vector, so it doesn't matter that which direction the two cards are going, they have a total of 100 joules of kinetic energy. In an elastic collision, the kinetic energy that you have at the beginning is still there at the end. When the two cards collide, some of the energy is absorbed in a bumper or they change shape a little bit, and then they bounce off each other. If they change shape and they keep in that shape, then some of that energy is lost to bending and changing the shape of the objects. But in this case, it's an elastic collision. Whatever energy they went into the collision with, they come out. So this might have 55 joules, and this might have 45 joules, but the total afterwards is equal to what it was before. It's still 100 joules. That's very helpful. You're going to find out that having this equation be true means that you can use this equation and momentum to calculate the velocities after the collision. Sometimes the energy is not all given back. That's an inelastic collision. And sometimes uh, a lot of energy is lost or only a little bit of energy is lost. So there can be varying degrees of an inelastic collision. In this case, I got two cards. This one afterwards, after this collision, might have 35 joules and this has 40 joules, sorry, 25 joules. If this has 35 joules after and this has uh, 25 joules afterwards, it means 40 joules is lost. So I can't say that the kinetic energy before is equal to kinetic energy afterwards. That statement is not true. It means I can't use this along with momentum to find out these final velocities. I have to have some other way of doing it. Now, where are elastic collisions or inelastic collisions found? Elastic collisions, where all the energy is returned, is something like a subatomic particle collision. Um, you would like an elastic collision in something like golf. When the golf club head hits the golf ball, you want the golf ball and the club head to not lose energy to heat, change in shape, or sound, and all that energy or a big portion of that energy will go into the golf ball. Um, you might also want that kind of collision between a basketball and the floor. And if you drop a basketball, it doesn't drop, bounce quite as high. Some of the energy is lost. Inelastic collision, you definitely want an inelastic co collision with the airbag in your car. When the car stops, you're still moving and the airbag's inflated. It absorbs. You have a collision with the airbag and a lot of that energy is dissipated. If it wasn't, the energy would be absorbed in the collision and then you'd get a lot of that energy back and you'd go back through the back window. So the more inelastic collision you can have with the airbag, the better off you are. You want all the kinetic energy that went into the collision to be absorbed and changed into another form. It's never lost, it's just changed into another form, and the form is not kinetic energy. 